May peace and God's blessings and mercy be upon you. I would like to welcome all of our viewers, so welcome to a new episode of our program celebrating the best women on earth. Today we'll talk about yet another of the best women on earth. A jewel like the rest of her sisters, may God be pleased with them. But her circumstances were most similar to those of her sister Ruqayya. So much so that when she died, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, laid her body to rest beside her sister in the same grave. May God be pleased with all Ahlul Bayt. Today's episode is about the blessed Umm Kulthum, the daughter of our beloved, the blessed Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Before we go any further, please allow me to welcome my dear friend and mentor, Dr. Abdel Al Kahlawi. Peace be upon you, my dear. Peace be upon you and the mercy of God and His blessing. Welcome and welcome to our dear viewers who have tuned in to another episode. The truth is, she was a flower, a fresh flower emanating a beautiful scent. And she was a third of the daughters of Al Habib al Mustafa, peace be upon him. Zainab was the eldest. And then comes Ruqayya, and after that, Umm Kulthum, who God willing will be the center of God our episode willing. tonight. And the younger we know was Fatima, may God be pleased with them all. We ask God that we can follow in their footsteps to heaven. Today we will be presenting an example I hope every woman and every girl is able to learn how to live life to the fullest, to embrace each phrase of her life for what it's worth, and as they say, live completely in the moment. At first, she was at the epitome of her happiness when she was living in the Prophet's home, this beautiful home filled with her cohesive family. With a blessed Khadija for a mother, this woman whose light permitted joy into every corner of the house, this kind and tender father who was overjoyed to have them as daughters. From there, she went to being patient and enduring, and after that, her struggle for her religion, and through all of this, having complete faith in placing her fate in the hands of God. When we do that, no matter how our lives change and what events occur, our faith remains as hers did unchanging. This kind of faith only comes to those who have embraced faith, of whom God said, Those who believe and obscure, not their belief by wrongdoing. Theirs is safety, and they are rightly guided. These are people whose hearts are safe and secure. They have an inherent understanding that no matter what happens, it is only our earthly life, and nothing more than our mortal existence. No matter what they hear, or what they see in the world itself, it tells us to beware for as long as we live of its unfairness and injustice. Do not be fooled by the good times, for my face is pleasant, but my reality bites. These are the people who understood the true meaning of life and the truth behind it. That is why I hope that everyone watching today will hear me when I say this world is not paradise. This life is not heaven at all, but rather it is the home in which we experience trials and calamity. So we should always remember the women of the Prophet's house to remember the daughters of Al-Habib al-Mustafa, peace be upon him, and look at how much they all endured. Let us return to the beautiful home. I always love talking about the blessed Khadija. May God be pleased with dear. her. And to talk about the home in its most beautiful example, as she made it for her family, the home she built on pillars of love, a caring and kindness to one another, a home beautified by a great spirituality transcending all when the divine revelation lived amongst them. Their revelations shared the time they had with their father and was there with them during the time their father spent with them. And so Khadija's home became just as she had seen in her vision. It was as if the sun rays collected in her home and from there spread to the world. How lovely! That was what Khadija had seen. And that is how the house was. Warmth and happiness and an inherent appreciation of everything. Don't forget that this home was, as you know, let me remind you, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was orphaned at a young age and was an only child and so was used to having a lot of time to himself. And all of a sudden, God blessed him with a family. Khadija, may God be pleased with her, was a wife and a mother. They both shared a pairing of their souls. I always remind you that this pairing of two souls is on a higher plane to what we see in most couples, who are merely married on a tangible material level, because between them, 
They were both sharing May God hearts grant us and bodies. All this happiness in our homes. Yes, there was no better life than the one that is blessed with such a pairing souls. For this is a uniquely beautiful relationship that does not care how you look or how old you are or young you are or any of the tangibles of this life. All there is are hearts that are there for one another. People who feel for each other, know when you're happy or upset, can tell when you're tired, and will help you carry your load. This was the Prophet, peace be upon him, in his home. And this was Khadija, his wife. And these are the girls who came out of his home. The blessed Zainab, who was a wife like no other to her husband, Abu al-As. And then there was the blessed Ruqayya, who was patient and was rewarded with a marriage to Uthman, the greatest of the Qurayshi young men. And this brings us to Umm Kulthum, the third daughter, who was the reason for the non-believers to mock him. Of course, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was not fazed by this, for he knew he was being mocked for that which was not shameful, for no wrong had been done. The Prophet was mocked for having had only daughters. They forgot that they were the people of ignorance and that they hated girls and practiced infanticide against them and that they were a barbaric bunch of idol worshippers and they were as if idols worshipping idols and statues worshipping statues, cold and uncaring. They forgot about all of this and they began looking at all of their negatives and projecting them onto Al-Habib Al-Mustafa, peace be upon him. They were also always shocked to see how happy he was to have his daughters. Let's return to his beautiful third daughter. She was known for her beauty and her body, which was fuller than those of Ruqayya and Zainab. She had a sense of humor and often joked to the Prophet, peace be upon him. She would always take her oldest sister Ruqayya, who was one year older, but the two were just like twins. And praise God, their circumstances were very praise similar. God. At first, they were married to the brothers Utbah and Utaybah and were divorced by them both as well. They were divorced together yes. and were humiliated and harassed greatly by Umm Jamil. God forgive her. Yes, their mother -in -law the one the who time. would have been their mother-in-law. They were put through a lot, but at the same time, she was rewarded by marrying Uthman ibn Affan after her sister's death. And that is why he was known as Du an Nurain, as in holder of two lights, and in the end were buried together, I mean next to each other. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, considered this, his fate in this life. He is happy, overjoyed, and relished having a family so complete, and then suddenly to lose them one after the other. It's not an easy thing, my Did child. Did the blessed Ruqayya pass away first? Yes, Ruqayya and then Umm Kulthum, before Ruqayya, her son Abdullah, and between those two was Zainab. And so he buried them one next to the other. Zainab, the blessed Let Zainab. Let us return once more to the story of Umm Kulthum. It is true that she did not migrate and was thus not known as one of the Muhajireen. She was, however, known by another name, one that evokes feelings of sorrow and images of hardship, and that is prisoner or Habisat al-Shab. But because we can truly say that she was the heroine of Muhammad's family, peace be upon him, in the incident of the siege. At the time of the siege, she was in the prime of life, a young woman, who had lived a life of great love in the home of her family. This cohesive home of Muhammad. And all of a sudden, she was immersed in the situation, which you can say was a 180 turn of events in her life. Through it all, she was patient and enduring, living and witnessing all that the Prophet, peace be upon him, did and saw. She was almost like a mirror to him. She lived it day by day, event by event, lived every movement. Peace be upon him. This was because Zainab was with her husband at the time and Ruqayya had migrated. Yes, she was the one who was left. But before Ruqayya had left and they were both being prepared to marry Utbah and Utaybah, and what happened had happened and the Prophet received the revelation and warn thy tribe of near kindred. And then, O thou enveloped in thy cloak, arise and warn, thy Lord magnify. And so as soon as he went public with a the call, their world was turned upside down. A short break, my dear, with your permission. 
just a few moments and we'll be right back after the break, God's willing. Here we are, dear viewers, continuing with the story of the third pearl in the Blessed Prophet's pearl necklace, Umm Kulthum, the daughter of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Please continue, my dear. In Sharp, Umm Kulthum does a number of roles after having moved from that glorious house and to have found herself in this narrow place. She took on the role of a nurse. In addition to taking care of her youngest sister, she cares for her father as well, who was living in a world of pain for what Quraysh had done to him. He never stopped paying and beseeching, and every time he prayed, I want to say that life was not full of bad. There were still plenty of people with a lot of good in them. There were still people with kind hearts, even amongst Quraysh. Yes. And so... Someone would load a camel with all the good it could carry, would unite its harness, and let it wander towards them. This is in spite of being non-believers. Yes, in spite of yes, that. Yes, God is great. But his heart is full of mercy. So he would load up his camel, would walk it to the entrance of the valley, untying its reins and allowing it to wander on its own. So they would tell the Prophet to pray, because every time he did, they would get some of their needs from God Almighty. Simply answered prayers. The beautiful, blessed Umm Kulthum performed her job as if she were the living image of the Prophet's words, peace be upon him, when he speaks of having daughters peace happy with him. them. They are the bringers of joy. They are the light that comes after darkness. They are the nurses of the ill. Heaven awaits them for their good deeds. And so she performed this role to the best of her abilities, until Abu Talib came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, with good tidings that a few of the people of Quraysh were disgusted with the behavior of the others and had to torp up the scroll in which they agreed to the siege which was in the Kaaba. And so the siege was broken and she was returned to her home. But let's look at how she returned. She returned as the lady of the household because Khadija at that time was gravely ill. But all they could do was wonder where the home they had always known had gone to. For now it was a home full of sorrow and sadly they all hoped that her mother would gain her strength back after the siege, but she did not and she passed away surrounded by her loved ones. The Blessed Khadija. Surrounded by Umm Kulthum and the young Fatima and Zainab, who was a constant visitor. And of course the blessed Habib al-Mustafa, peace be upon him, who would look upon her and then would leave and surrender his fate to the hands of Allah, for our souls belong to the Almighty. And so the kind mother passed away, leaving the blessed Umm Kulthum alone in the house to care for her sister and her father, all alone. Her sister, the Blessed Fatima? Yes. Soon after the divine order for the migration, or Hijra, came through, and the great immigrant left her and her sister in their home all alone, with no one with them. And after a short while, he sent someone to escort them to Medina, and that was a lovely reunion. After that, the significant events in the history came one after the other. Peace be upon him. Now, she was really attached to her nephew, Ruqayya's son. You remember the tale. A rooster pecked his eye and he became septic and died. After which, and for all her sorrows, her sister Ruqayya died. After her journey of suffering in Abyssinia and the great toils she faced in their return. As I said, she could not stand what had happened to her child, and she passed away. 
Through all of this, Umm Kulthum could see her world changing around her, and yet she was patient, and she understood that it was God's will, and that a believer is bound to know that this is what trials were. Those who believe and obscure, not their belief by wrongdoing. Theirs is safety, and they are rightly guided. She would repeat this first, for we have to have an understanding, a deep-seated faith, that all that God puts us through is good. And so the days went by, and the famous words about the Prophet, peace be upon him, were spoken. When Umar ibn Khattab, may God be pleased with him, came to the Prophet and told him how he felt bad, for he had already spoken to Uthman and Abu Bakr about his daughter Hafsa, and he felt bad about her. And the Prophet told him Hafsa would marry that who is better than Uthman, and yes. Uthman would marry that which is better than Hafsa. And so it was Uthman who would visit his in-laws frequently, and Umm Kulthum would see him then. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, loved him dearly for his polite manners, so that as soon as he asked of her hand in marriage, the Prophet accepted and said, If I had ten daughters, I would have married them all to Uthman. The blessed Uthman. Can you see how much he trusted him and what a beautiful thing it is? I want to say that when a person realized that the person in front of them is a good man, an honest and truthful believer, and is up for taking on responsibility that he will surely allow him to marry his daughter. I wish we could all learn from our good forefathers. Why don't we focus more on their positives that will allow us to go through life happy and content? Anyway, she got married and was overjoyed at the union. At first, she was reserved and unsure. However, she had married her late sister's husband. But because she had married a kind and tender man who understood what delicate beings these daughter of the Prophet, peace be upon him, were and treated them as such. And by treating her this way, Uthman was able to win her over. He was full of love, affection and caring. Umm Kulthum lived through many great events and witnessed many of the Muslim victories in the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and lived happily for six good years with her husband Uthman. During the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, the Prophet, peace be upon him, requested that he represented the 1,500 Muslims who were headed to Mecca for Umrah. All of them dressed in white, asking only to be allowed into Mecca to worship with Uthman as their emissary, may God be pleased with him. He first asked Umar ibn Khattab, but he declined because he had many problems with them. But Uthman, may God be pleased with him, had a good reputation, known for his kindness and his way with words, and he was loved by all who knew him. He was even welcomed into Quraysh. Anyway, he was delayed there, and then they heard a rumor that he was killed, and at that she could not stop her tears from flowing, feeling as if her vital part had gone missing. And upon his return, she was overjoyed at their reunion. And when the Prophet, peace be upon him, ordered after the council at Umm Salama that they put their differences apart, only two people objected to that treaty. Umar ibn Khattab and Uthman ibn Affan. May God be pleased with them. And when the Prophet, peace be upon him, prayed for the muhalliqin and not muqassirin, she prayed he would not yes, be angry with Uthman. Until he finally said al muqassirin and her mind was at ease. After that, a lot of events took place, such as the conquest of Mecca and the Muslims re-entering Mecca. The first thing she did was run to Al-Hujun to visit the grave of the blessed Khadija. God be pleased with her. Oh, what a day it was when she entered Mecca. A victor, knowing that the words, there is no God but God and Muhammad is his messenger, were rising to the heavens and feeling that every tree and every rock and every being repeated there is no God but God and Muhammad is his messenger, feeling everyone repeated the same thing with not a single idol or a statue in the Kaaba, a beautiful day that filled them all with pride and happiness. And she went to her mother's grave to share it with her, just as the Prophet, peace be upon him, did when he asked for his tent to be pitched next to the grave of the blessed Khadija, may God be pleased with her. He did not go to his home or anything, for all he wanted was to be near his beloved. Can you now see the sparing of souls I keep telling you about? Can you see how lovely it is? She later returned to Medina, 
and there she fell ill and suffered for a long time until she passed away. Uthman ibn Affan wept greatly for her loss, as did Al-Habib Mustafa, peace be upon him, and he went to the grave, expanded it, and placed her next to her sister. As if this were his fate, O oh Messenger of God! And he would look at the grave that united his daughters, Zainab, Ruqayya, and Umm Kulthum. The family of the Prophet, peace be upon him, being lost one after the other for him to be alone once more, except this time he had the companionship of God Almighty. And so he dried his tears and continued on his journey and his calling. But alas, this is the Prophet's fate, the fate of Muhammad, peace be upon him. May God have mercy on the soul of the blessed Umm Kulthum, the pious, enduring, and virtuous, who was patient when she was tried, and then from there rising again to live a life of greatness, caring for her husband and for her father, making her a strong and able woman who was a great example for every woman after her. With those beautiful words, my dear, let us end our episode for today. Dear viewers of The Best Women on Earth, today's episode was about Umm Kulthum, the daughter of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Thank you and Godspeed. <laughs>